There was a time when paychecks and government checks were handed to you as a piece of paper. A time when you had to take them physically to somewhere and cash them. No, seriously. It was a real thing. I worked in a department store on the main street of a mining town. We had regulars that would come in and cash those checks. They'd pick up a few things, maybe sit down and have a coffee and a treat in the cafe before doing some of their shopping and then heading home. Over time, we got a sense of their financial struggles. But it wasn't their modest earnings that haunted me. It was the holiday season. The Cabbage Patch Doll Christmas was my final retail job. It wasn't the money the customers made that triggered me. It was the money they didn't make combined with the gifts they had to get their kids for Christmas. Why reflect on this now? These are the thoughts that echo in my head. reflect on this now? In the wake of Christmas, as the remnants of festive celebrations fade and a harsh reality sets in for many, driven by societal pressures and relentless media messaging, parents often feel compelled to lavish gifts upon their children, even when finances are tight. Year after year, I witnessed well-intentioned parents empty their pockets and their bank accounts, only to face the grim aftermath in January and February. Empty cupboards, unpaid bills, palpable desperation. I knew this pain intimately. I'd lived it. Christmas was already one of my most hated times of year after spending one in a woman's shelter so my mother could be safe from my father. I don't blame my mother for that. I saw the drunken rage of my father and the couch fly through the picture window. She did what she had to do. But every Christmas after that, my mother went overboard to make Christmas amazing for the kids. And when Christmas was over and the food was gone, we had loads of gifts and toys, but we struggled to find food in the house because not only was the food gone, but so was the money. A home filled with gifts and toys, but devoid of sustenance. You may not be able to relate to this. That's fair. It's not a scenario every child faces. The fact is, it wasn't a scenario most could relate to because it happened in silence, behind closed doors. Gone was the giving spirit of the season. Quiet were the organizations that tried to support families like mine because they had already milked the wallets of donors dry during Christmas, and now they had to stretch those dollars out over the year. Christmas is the launch of the annual boom and bust cycle for too many families, and despite the glad tidings and good cheer, Christmas is just the launch of the bust cycle for many as it brings the sense of loneliness and not belonging into crystal clear clarity. It is January 2nd as I record this podcast. The day the ice dam breaks on the waterfall of bills and obligations and emotions that were set aside for that fleeting alternate reality of Christmas. Churches that had their doors open wide for the celebration of the birth of their God now have their doors locked tight while many of their God's children sleep outside in the cold nearby. 
food banks that delivered hampers for the seasoned are now in hibernation mode, handing out bare minimums as they stretch their Christmas fundraising dollars over the next 11 months. Retail jobs that added needed income for many vanish, leaving families in limbo as retailers transition to Valentine's and St. Paddy's Day. If none of these are your reality, I'm happy for you. I truly am. But I want you to do something. I want you to step out your door into the street or into the hallway of your apartment building. Just for a moment. Take a deep breath and look left. And then look right. And then close your eyes. You know. You know the person, the family, the people. You know the door that conceals the family struggling to feed their children. You know the window that that lonely, isolated soul watches the world through. I know you know. So what will you do? Midnight, December 31st. When the clock strikes 12, the spirit of Christmas dies, and the rose-colored glasses are donned and personal bubbles deployed, shielding us from the harsh realities that persist beyond the holiday glow. What will you do? This episode has been brought to you by the boutique publisher, Our Workshop. You can support this podcast by subscribing, sharing it with friends on social media, and by purchasing my books on Amazon. Don't forget to check out my latest young adult contemporary fantasy novel, Draconum Lacrima Mortis, Tears of the Dragon. And if you go to ourworkshop.ink, you can find merch for this podcast in the shop. Stop by and have a look around.